Good evening, everybody. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, ask Remco Brahma, our, cha our chaplain, to come up and lead us in invocation. Let's pray together. <laughs> our God in heaven, we look back on the year that's just behind us with gratitude for the blessings that we received because they increased our joy as well as for the trials and difficulties because they helped us grow and learn. And we look ahead at the new year and pray for the richest of blessings on the life and work of our mayor and city council, of our administrative leadership and all those who work under them. We pray for your blessing on our fire and police departments and their leadership and ask that you would renew the vision, the diligence and the competency of every person that has a part to play in serving the city of Milton. And we ask that you continue to bless our city. May peace and harmony reign over conflict and discord. And may safety and goodwill reign over crime and violence. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Milton City Council for Monday, January 4th, 2016 to order. Sudi, if you'd please call the roll and make general announcements. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'll be happy to call roll for the January 4th, 2016 regular meeting. I would like to remind those in attendance to please silence all cell phones at this time. Those attending the meeting who would like to provide a public comment either during the public hearing or during the call for public comment, you are required to complete a public comment card prior to speaking on the item. There is no public comment for consent agenda items or items under first presentation. Those called to speak will be taken in the order that the speaker cards are received by the city clerk prior to the beginning of tonight's meeting. All speakers will identify themselves by name, address, and organization if applicable. The city council may allow public comment on either an agenda item or general public comment from a representative of such an organized group or association, provided that such an individual shall file a notarized affidavit that they have the authority to speak on behalf of said organization on a form provided by the city clerk prior to the agenda item being called. Demonstration of any sort within the chamber is prohibited, so please refrain from any applause, cheering, booing, outbursts, or dialogue with any person speaking. Please show the same respect to the person speaking that you will expect to receive yourself. Anyone in violation will be asked to leave. As I call roll this evening, please confirm your attendance. Mayor Joe Lockwood. Here. Council Member Karen Thurman. Here. Council Member Matt Coons. Here. Council Member Bill Luss. Here. Council Member Bert Hewitt. Here. Council Member Joe Longoria. Here. Council Member Rick Morick. Here. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, good evening, and uh, we're excited to have uh, everybody here tonight and appreciate all of our volunteers and board members that are here. And we also appreciate uh, Judge Hansford for being here to swear in some of our uh, council members. So, Sudi, if you'll please call the first item. First item is the administration of oaths of office to the elected officials. And Judge Brian Hansford will administer the oath to Council Member Matt Kuntz. I, Matt Kuntz, do solemnly swear and affirm. I, Matt Kuntz, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of. That I will faithfully perform the duties of. Council member of this city. Council member of this city. That now and that I will faithfully support and defend the charter thereof as well as the constitution. And that I will faithfully defend and support the charter thereof as well as the constitution. And laws of the state of Georgia. And laws of the state of Georgia. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. Congratulations again. All right. Yes, good to see you. Yes. Congratulations, Matt. Good 
City. Go. Next, Judge Brian Hansford will administer the oath to Council Member Bert Hewitt. I, Bert Hewitt, do solemnly swear and affirm. I, Bert Hewitt, do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of. That I will faithfully perform the duties of council member of this city. Council member of this city. And that I will support and defend the charter thereof. And that I will support and defend the charter thereof. As well as the Constitution. As well as the Constitution. And laws of the state of Georgia. And laws of the state of Georgia. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. Congratulations. It's my Thank pleasure. You. Yes, sir. Congratulations, Bert. And next, Judge Brian Hansford will administer the oath to Councilmember Rick Morick. after me, please, sir. I, Rick Morey, do solemnly swear and affirm. I, Rick Morey, do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully perform the duties of. That I will faithfully perform the duties of. Council member of this city. Council member of this city. And that I will support and defend the charter thereof. And I will support and defend the charter thereof. As well as the Constitution. As well as the Constitution. And laws of the state of Georgia. And laws of the state of Georgia. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. Congratulations. Thanks. Yes. Congratulations, Rick. Not so sure what to say to Donna. Condolences, maybe? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Okay, Sudi, if you'll please call our next item. The next item is the election of the Mayor Pro Tem, okay. Mayor Jalopi. So uh, per our charter, uh, this position uh, rotates every year. So we are uh, at this point going to elect a, a, a another Mayor Pro Tem, and that's uh, no reflection to the uh, previous Mayor Pro Tem, but uh, again, like I said, per our charter, it uh, rotates every year. So. Um, I've got my ideas, but I'm going to open up nominations for uh, Mayor Pro Tem. <laughs> Rick? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Matt Coons for Mayor Pro Tem. Well, second that steam. Okay. Got a uh, motion and a second to uh, uh, look uh, Matt Coons as Mayor Pro Tem. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. So, Matt, if you'll uh, step down, we'll swear you. <laughs> Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of Mayor Pro Tem of the city and that I will support and defend the charter thereof as well as the Constitution and the laws of the state of Georgia and of the United States of America. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Sudi, if you'll please sound the next agenda item. Our next agenda item is the approval of the meeting agenda, agenda item number 16001. Okay. Is there anything on the agenda, uh, changes to be considered from council or from staff? Okay. Now I'll open up for a motion on the published agenda. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, agenda as presented. Second. Okay. We've got a motion from Council Member Thurman, second from Council Member Longoria. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Next item is public comment. Public comment is a time for citizens to share information with the mayor and city council and to provide input and opinions. 
on any matter that is not scheduled for its own hearing during today's meeting. There's no discussion on items on the consent agenda or first presentation from the public or from council. Each citizen who chooses to participate in public comment must complete a comment card and submit it to the city clerk. Please remember this is not a time to engage the mayor or members of city council in conversation. When your name is called, please come forward and speak into the microphone stating your name and address for the record, and you'll have five minutes for remarks. Sudi, if you could please call the first public comment. We have three public comments this evening, and the first one comes from Scott Reese. Mr. Mayor, members of council, I'm Scott Reese with Brumlow Reese & Associates doing business at 13685 Highway 9, Milton, Georgia, 3004. Here tonight to um, seek your guidance. Um, I have a um, client that has a 30-acre parcel. <clears throat> He's seeking to um, create approximately five six-acre tracts of land. <clears throat> Elderly gentleman on the property many years. It uh, has some topography on it. It's not really suited for horse farms, but it, uh, in his mind, he wants, um, you know, five, six-acre wooded lots. <clears throat> Went through the process, met with Robin and Carter and everyone, and thought we had uh, kind of a plan to work with. Um, what we ended up, um, as we went further in, the um, the fire code, um, I guess, inhibits or stops um, what we were pl planning on doing. The property is located down a gravel road, public gravel road, that does not have Fulton County water accessibility. There's no water main down it. Um, so um, I guess my understanding, I cannot find the written fire code for um, the, I guess, the ordinance, um, how we handle individual house construction. I know there's, in a subdivision, there's a hose lay distance, but in this particular case, <clears throat> um, we can't go forward without doing a couple of hundred thousand dollars of infrastructure. So uh, when I got back with a client, well, then it's, well, I guess we'll have to look at marketing to a developer, and we'll do 31-acre lots. Well, I think you and I just spent two years of trying to figure out a way um, to not go down that path. Um, I'm at kind of my wit's end, um, and I'm not disparaging anyone on staff. I think they're trying to help, too. But um, I would like to find or have you guys guide me and how we can go forward. I've got two other tracks that are very large, um, and they're looking at doing, and they're both on gravel roads, at, and these are 100 plus acre tracks. Um, possibly 20 acre lots or uh, something along that line. But if we've got to do infrastructure like we would on a major one acre lot subdivision, it's not gonna happen. Uh, it's gonna go some other way. So. What I'm looking for is ideas or uh, some options of how we can go through with limiting our infrastructure costs where we can get to where I think we all want to be and preserving our larger tracks uh, with uh, the bigger lots. Um, I think everyone understands that as people age and uh, inheritance comes into effect, um, some of these parcels are going to have to be sold. It's not a uh, choice. It's a, it's a must. And if we can uh, keep them from being cut up into one-acre lots, I think it would benefit everyone. So that's um, I'm here seeking your guidance, and hopefully uh, we can come to uh, some way. I mean, it may be that the, we're, you know, the SMSA that we're precluded I know we do it in Cherokee County. I thought everybody kind of played by the same rules as far as the state on uh, um, the infrastructure of the stormwater management. And I would have thought maybe the fire code, but maybe I'm mistaken. So anyway, um, thank you for your time. And uh, 
if there is something that I can do that, I, that I'm yet to discover going through, and I'm not trying to step over heads or anything. I thought I had gone through the process. I'm in a dead end. My other option is uh, we market to a developer and we go because if it's going to cost that to do it, then they've got to have a return. So it's going to be, you know, one acre lots. So thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Sudi, if you'd please call the next person. Our next public comment comes from Ms. Margaret Lutens. Hello, my name is Margaret Lutens, and I live at 3515 Peacock Road, right around the corner from here. And I've come this evening to follow up on my comment from last week. I would like everybody to know that our city manager did reach out to me and did offer to have a meeting with himself, the mayor, our police chief, and councilperson Karen Thurman. And before the meeting, Councilperson Rick Morig, that represents my district, offered his availability to the meeting as well. I would like to let you know that I have not heard back from Mr. Jim Seabaugh yet. So uh, perhaps when I mentioned that my issues were the same issues as my male neighbor who had emailed Mr. Seabaugh over a weekend and got a response that next Monday, I did not make myself clear enough that I have issues above and beyond what my male neighbor had. His issues are rather limited to the flooding in his yard, whereas my issues are concerning flooding, not only in his yard, but on the Greenway Trail, people across the street from me, people downstream from me in Alpharetta, in Roswell. The Camp Creek runs through my HOA property and it unfortunately has become quite a dumping ground for a lot of trash, which is what brought me to City Hall to make a comment for the first time December in 2014. So again, I'm bringing up the issue of people not being treated equally, which is something that is in our ethics code that's going to be up for discussion this evening. Uh, the problem at my corner is everyone's problem. So this meeting to address my issues, I'd like everybody to understand that it's not just my issues with trash. Perhaps some of you on the way here this evening drove by the corner of Bethany Bend where it meets Morris Road. That's where I live. You may have noticed that there's a Walmart shopping buggy on the sidewalk. It's been there for about a week. Prior to that, it was in the stormwater. So when I'm concerned about our community picking up the trash and enforcing our ordinances in regards to solid waste, it's a matter of respect for the environment, a matter of respect for everybody who lives in this city. And I'm going to bring it back to the budget. I mentioned last time I came to City Hall to question why the budget wasn't posted online, and we were all told that there would be a copy available at the finance counter. I went there and there wasn't a ready copy. I didn't tell you last time, but I was told if I wanted to have a copy of the budget to take home, I would have to fill out an open records request and pay a per page copying fee to take it home. Well, I don't really think that was a very honest, open, or, dealt with in a manner of integrity by our city manager. So I, I hope as you look at the ethics code this evening that you, I know you care as much about ethics going forward as I do. And I would like to have you consider postponing your vote on this and taking a look at how the city has done and perhaps produce a report card of how we're doing. This past year, 2015, has been very contentious. There has been a, uh, a lot of discord in the city. Uh, we've had the email scandals, a whole host of things that have happened. So I think it would be prudent for us to take a look at what we are doing remaining. with our ethics and I'd like to know what we do about the shopping cart. The gentleman before me asked for guidance. What do we do? How do we prevent that corner 
from being just one big garbage accumulation point. We have the lovely welcome to Milton sign with the horse, then there's all the trash in our wetlands. What's gonna happen when they open up this huge shopping, retail, dining, office space across the street? All of city, all of the city from one corner to the other, from end to end, should be beautiful and trash free. So I just wanted to let you know that I did get the offer, but I still haven't heard from Mr. Seaboth. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm just gonna make one general comment, um, not per pertaining to either of the last two comments, but uh, either the, the city manager, all the employees work under the city manager. So city manager is available to meet and can, can handle these issues as well as if you would not do not want to meet with city manager, someone can always meet with one of the elected officials, either myself, which I've made myself available, as well as any of the uh, council members to address any issues that you have as far as uh, in public comment. So, thank you. Sudi, if you please call the next. And our final public comment this evening comes from Mr. Jack Linden. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Jack Linden. I live at 14810 East Bluff Road in Milton. And thanks for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. About a, a couple of weeks ago on the, at the uh, December 17th meeting of Milton Rose Green, the uh, a Milton residents attending his, a resident attending his first meeting of MGG made a public statement criticizing MGG and the committee's advocacy role on environmental issues for the public and for city council. I want to set the record straight on this issue. In 2008, the resolution that created MGG stated that the committee was formed, quote, for the purpose of recommending action to the city with regard to environmental matters. And the latest MGG bylaws adopted by the city in December of 2014 states that the purpose of MGG includes, quote, identifying policies and practices that promote sustainable development and encouraging sustainable development that preserves green space in collaboration with other environmental entities. Thus, it's clear, I think, that the MGG involvement in, in environmental policy issues is appropriate, and it has been consistently, consistently since our inception. Milton Rose Green, according to its mission statement, is, quote, a citizen's committee advocating responsibly managed growth by conserving and protecting natural resources while preserving Milton's heritage and natural landscape for, for, the, for future generations. For those who aren't aware of what MGG does for the community, we are presently involved in approximately 20 different programs and projects driving us towards our continued goal the protection of natural resources and green space. These, these projects and, and programs include, include a, the Adopt a Road program, Rivers Alive Cleanup, twice annual paint collections, the annual Earth Day Festival, and the Evergreen Schools program, just to name a few. With respect to policy, MGG has been directly involved with most of the city's recent developments regarding land use, such as the Transfer of Development Rights program, form-based building codes, and impact fees. MGG members have been an integral part of each of the com citizen committees set up to review these programs. More recently, MGG has, has examined and provided information to city staff and city council regarding the concept of land development using the conservation subdivision approach as originally re recommended by Milton's comprehensive land use plan. Finally, the Comprehensive Land Use Plan adopted unanimously in 2011 by the Planning Commission and the City Council states that the city will work, quote, work with Milton Groves Green Committee to implement environmentally responsible policies and practices throughout Milton. So the idea that MGG is overstepping its mandate does not stand up to facts or to history and it is clear that our programs and knowledge add much needed input and value to the city of Milton. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Tootie, is that all for public comment? Yes, sir. Okay, then we'll uh, move on to our consent agenda. If you'll please sound the items. First item is approval of the December 7th, 2015 regular city council meeting minutes, agenda item number 15. 
16002. Next is approval of a memorandum of understanding between the City of Milton and the Lionheart School, Inc. for fiscal sponsorship of Camp Joyful Souls at Hopewell Middle School, agenda item number 16. 003. Our third and final consent agenda item is approval of a landscape services agreement between the City of Milton and Triscapes, Inc. for the field maintenance at Northwestern Middle School and Birmingham Falls Elementary School, agenda item number 16004. Mayor I'll move to approve the consent agenda as prepared by staff. Second. Okay, we've got a motion from Councilmember Lost, second from Councilmember. Uh, Coots for approval of the consent agenda. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's unanimous. Passes unanimous. Tonight we have no items under reports and presentations. First presentations, public hearing or zoning agenda. So the city clerk, if you'll please sound our unfinished business item. This is consideration of an ordinance to amend Chapter 4, Alcoholic Beverages, to provide for sales of wine and or beer by the package by licensed retail consumption dealers. Agenda item number 15, 318. First presentation was at the December 21st, 2015 meeting. Ms. Stacy Inglis. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The amendment to the ordinance that you have before you, um, as Sudi just spoke about, is to add the ability to, for a consumption on premises dealer, which is a restaurant, to um, have the ability to also hold a package um, license for wine and, and malt beverages only. So this is simply um, basically a restaurant owner asked me if this was something that was possible because he said that his patrons did not have the access, access to the wine and that, um, that he currently had access to and he had several patrons that wanted to purchase wine, bottles of wine to consume off the premises. Um, but this, the, or, the amendment will allow this to happen. Um, our Georgia rules and regulations um, do allow this type of uh, behavior that these uh, one single owner to have two different licenses and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions? Matt? The only question I have is this um, also consistent with some of our neighboring cities? I did not check that, no, but I can okay. certainly check. Okay, anybody care? So it's actually two separate licenses. One person will just hold both licenses. Correct. Both licenses for the same location. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Now I'll open up for a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve agenda item 15-318. Second. Okay. We've got a motion for approval from Council Member Hewitt. Second from Council Member Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if we can move on to new business, Sudi, if you'll please call sound the first item on new business. First item is consideration of subdivision plats. Agenda item number 15, 322. This is deferred at the December 21st, 2015 regular council meeting. Ms. Kathy Field. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. Uh, this is a revised plat list in front of you. As you may remember, at our last meeting, we did identify a few discrepancies in the uh, chart that was in front of you and uh, those corrections have been made um, and are reflected in this uh, list dated January 4th. In addition, we did add an additional column per your request, which is the last column entitled density. So um, you have before you the uh, 11 subdivisions for your review and approval. Do you have any questions for Kathy on this? I, I do. Bill? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Kathy, on, uh, let's see, one, on two of these applications, uh, number eight, you know, it's number seven. Uh, those are the two lots. Uh, on Francis Road uh, at the intersection of uh, Thompson Road. What is the, uh, does that same uh, zoning fall within the uh, Crooked Creek area? 
Um, yes, these are over, uh, they're, they're more than an AG1 when it's over one. So the, the, the zoning is, is more than a, an AG1 zoning. Okay, we're getting two lots on one and a half acres. Are they on sewer? Yes, they are. Yes. On uh, number 10, Parkside at Silos Green Road, uh, three and a third acres with uh, 14 lots. On. What zoning classification does that fall within? This is in the crab apples um, uh, overlay zone. Okay, it too is on sewer yes. then? Yes. Okay. So we're, just to make a point, um, there's still provisions out there for more than just one home per one acre out there. And uh, I think this really points it out here that uh, uh, in spite of all of the resistance out there to the contrary, uh, we're still building at uh, a higher density out there than what most people really realize. Yes. And it's allowed by code. It's allowed by our zoning ordinance. That's correct. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Question or comment? Okay. Then I'll uh, move for a, uh, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve agenda item number 15-322. Second. Okay, I've got a motion from Councilmember Kuntz in approval with seconded by Councilmember <coughs> Hewitt. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? It passes unanimous. Okay. Uh, move on to our next new business item. Sudi, if you'll please call that item out. Consideration of a resolution of the Milton City Council to readopt the five GMA ethics principles for recertification to be a Georgia certified city of ethics. Agenda item number 16005, Mr. Chris Lagerblum. Mayor and Council, this is something that you presented every year for your con <clears throat> consideration and, and uh, continuation as being a GMA uh, certified city of ethics. Um, if you adopt this resolution, what you're pledging is that the city will conduct its affairs. Um, in these five ways. Serve others, not ourselves. Use resources with efficiency and economy. Treat all people fairly. Use the power of our position for the well-being of our constituents and create an environment of honesty, openness, and integrity. Uh, this is uh, more procedural than anything, um, but I would present it for your consideration. If you adopt this resolution, we will forward the appropriate copy to GMA so that our certification as a city of ethics remains intact. Be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Any questions, Chris, on this? Joe? Yeah, Chris, I know we do this every year, and, you know, even if for some reason we were to, you know, drop our guard and, and not be um, as compliant as we should be, that's no reason for us not to take the pledge every year and say, you know, we're going to be a city of ethics. But a uh, citizen brought up earlier today uh, this idea of um, gauging our performance in courts with uh, the ideas behind that. And I was wondering, does the GMA provide some type of uh, an audit or some type of a um, sort of assessment that, that we could use? Or is there uh, any idea how we could maybe do a, some kind of report card on that? I, I'm not necessarily looking to create a whole big process and, and right. generate a lot of work because I think that we do really, really well in this particular area, but it would be good for us to somehow publish activity or, or effort that we put into this area so that it's not just us, you know, reaffirming, you know, our, our adherence to this every year. It's actually backed up by some type of uh, artifact that we can point to and say these are the things that we accomplished or did in the year, the previous year. I guess my reaction to that is I don't know that there's necessarily something that's going to track exactly in line with the five principles that I just read. Um, we do publish an annual report every year. This is a year where we will be going back to the public in the National Citizen Survey to gauge su uh, public confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, which is something that we do every other year. So we have a couple of those tools that we use and we publish the 
uh, outcomes of both of those. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, and if you recall at our last meeting, we adopted, or the council adopted the, the five-year strategic plan that we kind of set up purposefully so that we could have a report card to report against that strategic plan at the end of each um, calendar year. So I anticipate that we'll have that scorecard in that format going forward, but at this point it's kind of a conglomeration of an annual report that reports on outcomes and outputs um, as well as our uh, National Citizen Survey that gauges public. Is that the kind of thing that would be on our website for it everybody to take a look at? Yes, okay. sir. Right. Uh, further to uh, Councilman Longoria's comments here, um, back in 2008, I was one of two council people down in Savannah that received the uh, certificate of the City of Ethics down there. So I, I take it not only seriously, I take it personally. And uh, I feel like I've committed myself to it, as I have others, uh, but I feel like, uh, you know, this is a time like in a marriage, it's a renewal of vows, and I think you, we need to go back over it in some form or another, uh, kind of reinforcing our our belief in in uh, this code of ethics, and it's, it's not meant to be a menu-driven code either it's it's all inclusive but uh, I, I think we all need to be reminded occasionally of uh, of our code of conduct our code of ethics and what it really means not only to us working here together but to the entire community out there and we're setting an example up here uh, every time we sit down up here or every time we we go out in the community. Um, I would suggest, and I, I know our city attorney uh, has conducted GMA courses on, uh, on ethics before, and I was wondering, Ken, if, uh, if you have a condensed uh, version of your uh, presentation that you'd be willing to give to us at some point in time. Yeah, Councilman Merlusk, of, of course, and I do I do a lot of ethics training um, for a lot of a lot of various groups, including other local governments. And so, if the city of Milton wanted me to provide a very, you know, a, a abbreviated overview of those, just to kind of hit some of the high points, I'm happy to do that. Uh, of course, uh, I will tell you that um, that um, you know, I, as your city attorney, uh, this government does pay a lot of attention to this, and candidly, a lot of the attention that you pay to it, I can't disclose because it's things where we have these discussions uh, on a basis where you provide candid information to, you, to me and I provide candid counsel back to you. And so a lot of it, the citizens won't, won't know, but I can tell you that you all do take this very seriously. But I'm happy, Councilman Verlusk, of course, to go over these uh, with the council again. Okay, uh, based on that, uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to defer this agenda item to our uh, 20 January regular council meeting. But in the meantime, I'd like to have it put on our agenda for our work session on uh, next Monday, 11 uh, January. And perhaps you could be prepared at that time, Ken, to uh, give us kind of a short course. And uh, I think this will send a message to the city. Uh, like I said before, renewing our vows and uh, uh, let, letting the world know that, that we're, we really are committed to this code of conduct. And it's not just uh, a plaque on the wall over here in City Hall that uh, mm -hmm. seems to be uh, attracting dust. So, uh, Mayor, repeat my motion. I'd like to move that we defer this item to the 20 January um, regular meeting agenda, but in the meantime, to place it on our work session agenda for 11 January. Second okay. up. Okay, got a uh, <coughs> council member Lusk's motion and a second by uh, council member Kuntz. Is there any discussion, mm -hmm. Joe? So Bill, hear what you're saying. I support, I support the, what we're trying to do there. Certainly being a city of ethics is not something that we should take lightly. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm wondering about the delay in, or deferring the uh, assertion that, that we're supposed to take tonight or the affirmation because to me, regardless of anything, we should be able to do that on a regular basis. And so I was wondering if there was some maybe other purpose that you had in mind in, in deferring our affirmation. Well, I guess just in a logical sequence of events that uh, would go through this process and it's like preparing for any other ceremony, I guess, that you go through the educational part of it again, like you're getting married, you go through you go through the uh, instructions before you get married, and yeah. uh, then you say your vows uh, following uh, that. Uh, yeah, are you maybe not saying like marriage counseling after you're married? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Karen? I understand where Bill's coming from, but I think since this is something we do every year and it's a reaffirmation, postponing it looks like we're not sure that we're right. there. I think we need to go ahead and and uh, adopt this, um, readopt the, the five GMA ethic principles. They're not going to change. It's what it is. They're the principles that GMA has set forth, and we need to make sure that we adhere to him for, uh, regardless. And then if we want to have a follow-up work session that the city attorney puts on, then that's fine. But I don't support postponing adopting the ethical principles because I think that makes us look like we're not sure that we want the ethical principles. I can agree with that. Uh, Rick? Yeah. I guess the, the comment I've got is I, I would like to see us have Ken give us an overview. <clears throat> All of us who went through training when we became a, a newly elected official have gone through this, but I think it would be good. And I think it would be good that the public hear the things that are presented and what we've sworn other than just the condensed version. So I do support the, the portion of saying let's let's look at it at our next work session if, if the council is interested in that. Okay. Anybody else? There I'll highlight right. just to, as well sure. just for you for you as the council and the public, this is one of the few resolutions that is adopted by the council where a, every council member is a signatory to it. Typically the resolutions are just executed by the mayor and the city clerk and this is one uh, where annually we do ask each of you to affirm the statements to be true by indicating your signature on the resolution. Okay, so um, therefore, um, basically, in order to pass this resolution tonight, we'd need, um, uh, if another motion, you know, if this motion, say, failed and there was another motion to support this, then uh, tonight, then there would, it would need to be affirmed by everybody, correct? No, it does not. No. There's just an opportunity for everybody to affirm with their signature. Okay. We would only need a majority of the council to adopt okay. the resolution. I agree. I would be concerned if anyone did not want to sign <laughs> the resolution <laughs> supporting the GMA principle of ethics, quite honestly. Absolutely. You know, I mean. So, Bill, would you, would you reconsider your motion to, to go ahead and allow us to affirm tonight, but follow up with the, the training session that you suggested? Yes, from right. I agreed to that. If we can put it on our work session agenda for next yeah. week, if that's agreeable with it is. So that's the direction time. of the council. That's what we'll do. Sir, you would. And you, you're available to do that. I will be available, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Withdraw All right. Motion. I'll uh, open up for uh, another motion. Then. Mayor, I'll make a motion that we approve agenda item number 16005 to readopt the. <coughs> Five GMA ethics principles for recertification to be a Georgia certified city of ethics. Second, second the motion. Okay, we've got a motion for approval from Councilmember Thurman, second from Councilmember Vosk. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. That passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, we'll move forward, and if the city clerk will please sound the next item. Our next item is consideration of a resolution appointing members to the City of Milton Board of Zoning Appeals by appointing or reappointing members from District 1, Post 2, District 2, Post 2, and District 3, Post 2. Agenda item number 16006, Mayor Joe Lockwood. Okay. I'll open up for District 1 to uh, open up for their reappointment. Who do we have? District 1. District 1, Post 2. I'm District 2, Post 2. No. No. You're District 
When did you get moved? Yeah, no, I'm District 2. <clears throat> district 2-2. Two, two. I'm District 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. Yes, I'm District 1. I'm just looking okay. at the name tags. Yeah, so Bert Hewitt is District 1. Yeah, okay. okay. Oh, I got it easy. <laughs> Todd Chernick is going to be my appointment to the BCA. What city is this? Okay, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, Todd's been serving for the last nine years and has graciously uh, agreed to, um, to sign up again for another four. We haven't run him off yet. So I would like to put forward Todd Chernick. He's not here this evening, but will be available next week for swearing in. I'll second it. Okay, so we've got a, a motion for re reappointing Todd Chernick for uh, under Council Member Hewitt. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That's unanimous. All right, we'll uh, move on to uh, Matt. All right, um, for the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, I want to reappoint Christopher Bloor who uh, has faithfully served in that role. Um, and uh, I love the fact that he's been um, looking at every issue in a way that, you know, asks some good questions and brings out a better um, better development for our city. And he does a great job. And he's got his family here as well. And so I'm just glad to uh, make a motion to or, or request that we reappoint Christopher Bloor to the Board of Zoning Appeals District 2 post 2. OK. Excuse me. I have a motion. I'll make a motion that we accept uh, Matt's uh, nomination of Christopher Bloor for Board of Zoning Appeals. Okay. Oops, sorry. All right. Got a motion uh, to reappoint uh, Christopher Bloor from uh, Council Member uh, Borig and a second from Council Member uh, Thurman. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimous. Okay. So we have Rick. Okay. Um, it's my pleasure to to nominate Mr. Sumit Shah, who has served the last two years on the Board of Zoning Appeals and also recently stepped up and volunteered to be part of CPAC and help us as we, we go forward. Appreciate his service the last two years and appreciate him stepping up and saying that he would do it for another four years. Okay. Sorry, request a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve um, Mr. Samit Shah for um, District 3, Post 2 for the BZA. Second. Okay, I've got a motion from uh, uh, Council Member Kuntz, a second, I believe. Was that Joe? Yep. Okay, from uh, Council Member Longoria. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That passes unanimous. So we have, let's say, da, da, da. all right, so uh, next it is, uh, I'd like to ask those that just got reappointed to step forward and we'll uh, swear them in, give them their oaths. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully perform the duties of the Board of Zoning Appeals member of the city and that I will support and defend the charter thereof as well as the Constitution and the laws of the state of Georgia and of the United States of America. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. And if we could uh, maybe get the council to come down and we'll take a picture. Uh, <laughs> volunteers, and we appreciate all the hard work. Okay, Sudi, if you'll please call the 
Next item on the design review board. Next item is consideration of a resolution appointing members to the City of Milton Design Review Board for appointing or reappointing members from District 1, Post 2, District 2, Post 2, and District 3, Post 2. Agenda item number 16007, Mayor Joe Lockwood. Okay. Um, I think Council Member Coots from District 2, Post 2 has a, a nomination. Great. So, um, um, for the design review board, I want to make sure that we uh, uh, renominate re Mr. Perry Mason. And Perry, as well, has also served faithfully the last four years um, and has done a great job um, helping us with all regards to our, to our decisions. And uh, just glad he's here. So, I want to make sure we, uh, we get him back on again. Okay. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to uh, appoint Terry Mason to. District 2, Post 2, Design Review Board. Second. Okay, I've got a motion uh, from Council Member Hewitt, second from Council Member Mori. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimous. Okay, so we will go next to uh, Council Member Hewitt. Um, I'd like to reappoint Richie Johnson to the Design Review Board for District 1, Post 2. Richie served the last two or three years and uh, appreciate his service. I'd like to, for him to continue. I make a motion that we uh, appoint Richie Johnson as the Design Review Board appointee for Councilman Hewitt. Second. Okay, I've got a motion for approval from Council Member Morig, second from Council Member Longoria. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes unanimous. So next is uh, Council Member Morgs. It's, it's my pleasure to nominate Tim Bryan for District 3, Post 2. Uh, Tim has served with us on the Design Review Board for the last four years. He's an architect, has his own firm. I've worked with Tim professionally and respect his work and really appreciate what he's done for the city. And I'd like to nominate him, renominate him for another four years. Okay. I have a motion. Mayor, I move we uh, not or accept Tim Bryan as uh, District 3, Post 2's uh, representative for the DRB. Second. Second the motion. Okay. We have a motion from Council Member Longoria. And I think I heard Council Member Lusk second the motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. So, all right, next uh, I will. Uh, do the oath, if so, if uh, Perry, Ricky, and uh, Tim would step forward. Go Richie, I'm sorry. Do we have the planning commission? All right, if you guys would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear and affirm. I do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully perform the duties of. I will faithfully inform the duties of the design review board members, the design review board members of the city, of the city, and that I will support and defend the charter thereof. And I will support and defend the charter thereof, as well as the constitution, as well as the constitution, and the laws of the state of Georgia, the laws of the state of Georgia, and of the United States of America. The United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, well, the clerk's busy. I'll go ahead and sound the next agenda item, which is consideration of a resolution appointing members to the City of Milton Planning Commission by appointing or reappointing members from District 1, Post 2, District 2, Post 2, and District 3, Post 2, agenda item number 16-008. Okay. First, we'll uh, go to Council Member Kutz for his appointee. Um, for the Planning Commission, I want to reappoint Mr. Mark Bittner, who is a neighbor of mine, has been on the uh, HOA for, for my subdivision stable points, and 
and uh, he and I probably talk more regularly about issues than, than anybody, but I really appreciate his, his thoughtful ideas, um, his perspective that um, I think makes our city better, and, and I'm very honored to have him serve another four years. Okay, I'll open up for a motion. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the appointment of uh, Mark Bittner for the Planning Commission. Second the motion. Okay, we've got a motion. Uh, from Councilmember Thurman, second by Councilmember uh, Lusk. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimous. So let's see. Next, we will open up for uh, Councilmember Hewitt. Um, I'd like to um, reappoint Fred Edwards as my uh, appointment to the Planning Commission. He has graciously agreed, agreed to come back. Uh, They've done a lot of work on the Planning Commission, and he said his work's not finished yet. So I'd like to put forward uh, Fred Edwards for District 1, Post 2, Planning Commission. Mayor, I'll move to approve uh, Fred Edwards uh, to the Planning Commission for District 1, Post 2. Second. Okay, I have a motion from Council Member Lost, second from Council Member Coons. I'd like to almost, or, or also, uh, State that uh, look, Fred's been on there since day one, so that's right. put in a lot of <laughs> a lot of time. We appreciate that. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimous. So, Rick, for your appointment. Yeah, it's my pleasure to uh, renominate Gary Overshot for District Three, Post Two, Planning Commission Board. Uh, Gary o has served for the last four years for us and done a great job. He is someone who's been very involved. He takes the, the job seriously and I would respectfully submit him for renomination. Okay. I have a motion. Mayor, I move to appoint Gary Overshet as a uh, Planning Commission member for District 3, Post 2. Second. All right. Got a motion from Council Member Longoria, second from Council Member Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And if uh, Mark, Fred, and Gary will step forward, we'll do the oath. You guys will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear and affirm. I do solemnly swear and affirm. That I will faithfully perform the duties of. That I will faithfully perform the duties of. Planning commission member. Planning commission member. Of the city. Of the city. And that I will support and defend the charter thereof. That I will support and defend the charter thereof. As well as the constitution. As well as the constitution. And the laws of the state of Georgia. And the laws of the state of Georgia. And of the United States of America. And of the United States of America. Thank you very much. You guys would sign here. Chris, if you want to go ahead and call the next item. Uh, consideration of a resolution appointing members to the City of Milton Parks and Recreation Advisory Board by appointing or reappointing members from District 1, Post 2, District 2, Post 2, and District 3, Post 2, agenda item number 16009. Okay. We'll uh, open up with Council Member Coots. Yeah. Yeah. You bet. He's not here right now, but uh, I would like to renominate uh, Joey Costanzo um, for the District 2 Post 2 Parks and Rec Commission appointee. Uh, he began as Rick's appointee, and um, as we had some changes on the Parks and Rec um, group, he I was fortunate that Joey decided to move into my district. So uh, he wound up staying there and uh, has done a great job, and I'm um, very glad to, to renominate Joey Costanzo. Okay, I'll open up for a motion. Mayor, I move that we uh, approve or appoint Joey Costanzo to the Parks and Rec Board for District 2, Post 2. Second. Okay, I've got a motion for approval from Council Member Longoria and I believe <coughs> Council Member Thurman. Second, or it was close there, Rick. Right? 
Councilman Thurman. Um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay, Bert, I'm gonna open up for you. Um, for District 1, Post 2, I'd like to reappoint Coach Ron Hill to the Parks and Recreation uh, Advisory Board. Ron uh, has been serving on this board uh, for several years. I don't quite know the number, but he too, I guess they're a mobile community, he too lived in, <laughs> lived in a previous district, but we were lucky to keep him in the city. So, uh, Coach Ron Hill, uh, for my appointment to Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Okay, I'll open up for a motion. I'd like to mo make a motion that we accept Coach Ron Hill for District 1, Post 2, Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Second the motion. Okay, I've got a motion from Council Member Morig, second by Council Member Lusk. All in favor, please say aye. 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 That passes unanimous. Next, uh, Rick, I'll open up for your appointment. Sure, it's uh, my pleasure to reappoint Phil Cran Cranmer as my nominee for District 3, Post 2. Uh, Phil has served for the last year when Matt kind of pulled Joey away. <laughs> Phil was gracious to step up. He's got a couple of young daughters, and he's actually shown his dedication to the pursuit of athletics and recreation by being here on crutches tonight. So I'd like to make, make that a motion, or bring that forward for your approval, please. Okay, have a motion? We will make a motion that we approve Phil Cranmer for District 3, Post 2 to the Parks and Rec Commission. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Coons, second from Councilmember Thurman. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. That's unanimous. So if Ron and Phil would step forward, we'll do the other. And for those here, we've got some, as soon as we get finished here, we've got some refreshments and uh, celebrate a little bit. You guys will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully, faithfully perform the duties of Milton Parks and Recreation Advisory Board of the city and that I will support and defend the charter thereof as well as the Constitution as well as the Constitution and the laws of the state of Georgia and the laws of the state of Georgia and of the United States of America and the United States of America thank you for your service thank you. You're out. could ask everybody that was reappointed to step forward and the council and we'll do a Thank you.
you guys are okay, we'll just finish the meeting and then, or do you want to, should we break? And... You know what, I'd, I'd really? like to ask the council for probably okay with it, since you've got a crowd here, let's push yeah, the keep it a formal to, meeting. To, yeah. let's, let's push them to the work session next week, and uh, that way you've got a crowd here, and we've got some food assembled. Um, there's no urgency to that, if you're okay with seven days. Um, and uh, just by way of the staff report, say Happy New Year. I'm okay with that. Uh, yep. Okay. good with that. All right. Any uh, council, anything council wants to report on? I would just, as you adjourn the meeting and as, as you socialize, just a, a quick and quick reminder that there will still be a quorum of the council presence. Correct. Even though we won't be in an official meeting, please just don't congregate together and make sure we stay separate from it. <laughs> Okay. Or don't talk about don't talk, don't talk city, city business. business. <laughs> we can be together. Just I would just rather even the perception not even be there. So, yep. <laughs> That's an ethical. Exactly. All right. I'll conclude our regular meeting. Do I have a motion that we adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion to second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. <laughs>